organizations can impact their Sigma level by integrating core principles from the Six Sigma methodology into leadership styles, process management, and improvement endeavors. The principles of Six Sigma, and the tools used to achieve them, are covered in detail in various sections of our Six Sigma Complete course, but some common ideas are introduced in this lecture session. Customer-focused improvement in the illustration about the food plant in our last lecture, we saw that the Six Sigma process doesn't just make improvements for the sake of driving up Sigma levels. A primary principle of the methodology is a focus on the customer. When we will study the basic concepts of Six Sigma later on this course, we'll look at the voice of the customer and ways for establishing what the customer really wants from a product or process. By combining that knowledge with measurements, statistics, and process improvement methods, organizations increase customer satisfaction, ultimately boosting profits, customer retention, and loyalty. A detailed understanding of the customer and customer desires not only lets businesses customize product offerings and services, but it also lets organizations to offer additional features customers want and are willing to pay for, to prioritize product development to meet current needs, to develop new ideas based on customer feedback, understand changing trends in the market, identify areas of concern, prioritize work on challenges based on how customers perceive various problems or issues, and last but not the least it helps an organization to test solutions and ideas before investing time and money in them. The value stream is the sequence of all items, events, and people required to produce an end result. For example, the value stream for serving a hot dog with ketchup to someone would include a hot dog supplier, a bun supplier, a ketchup supplier, hot dogs, buns, ketchup, a cooking procedure for the hot dog, a pot, tongs, someone to do the cooking, a plate, someone to put the hot dog into the bun, someone to put the ketchup on the hot dog, someone to put the completed hot dog onto a plate, someone to serve the hot dog to another. If you combine all of the above processes into a pictorial representation of exactly how these elements become the served hot dog, then you have a value stream map. The purpose for determining a value stream for a process is that you can identify areas of concern, waste, and improvement. In the above process, are there four different people putting the hot dog together and serving it, or is one person doing all four of those tasks? Is the supplier a single grocery store, or are you shopping for items at various stores and why? Do you get savings benefits to offset the added time spent working with multiple suppliers? These are some examples of the questions you can reveal an answer during value stream mapping. Continuous Process Improvement Inherent in the Six Sigma method is continuous process improvement. An organization that completely adopts a Six Sigma methodology never stops improving. It identifies and prioritizes areas of opportunity on a continuous basis. Once one area is improved upon, the organization moves on to improving another area. If a process is improved from 4 sigma to 4.4 sigma, the organization considers ways to move the sigma level up further. The goal is to move ever closer to the perfect level of 99.99966% accuracy for all processes within an organization while maintaining other goals and requirements, such as financial stability, as quickly as possible. Variation One of the ways to continuously improve a process is to reduce the variation in the process. Every process contains inherent variation. In a call center with 20 employees, Variation will exist in each phone call even if the calls are scripted. Inflection, accents, environmental concerns, and caller moods are just some things that lead to variation in this circumstance. By providing employees with a script or suggested comments for common scenarios, the call center reduces variation to some degree. Consider another example, a pizzeria. The employees are instructed to use certain amounts of ingredients for each size of pizza. A small pizza gets one cup of cheese, a large pizza gets two cups. The pizzeria owner notes a great deal of variation in how much cheese is on each pizza, and he fears it will lead to inconsistent customer experiences. To reduce variation, he provides employees with two measuring cups, a one-cup container for small pizzas and a two-cup container for large pizzas. The variation is reduced, but it is still present. 
Some employees pour cheese into the cups and some scoop it. Some fill the cups just to the rim, others let the cheese create a mound above the rim. The owner acts to reduce variation again. He trains all employees to fill the cup over the rim and use a flat spatula to scrape excess cheese off. While variation will still exist due to factors such as air pockets or how cheese settles in the cup, it is greatly reduced, and customers experience more consistent pizzas. Removing Waste Remember the hot dog example for value streams? We asked the question, do four different people act to place the hot dog in the bun, put the ketchup on the hot dog, plate the hot dog, and serve it? If so, does the process take more time because the product has to be transferred between four people? Would it be faster to have one person perform all those actions? If so, then we've identified some waste in the process, in this case, waste of conveyance. Removing waste, items, actions, or people that are unnecessary to the outcome of a process, reduces processing time, opportunities for errors, and overall costs. While waste is a major concern in the Six Sigma methodology, the concept of waste comes from a methodology known as Lean Process Management. Keeping People Equipped Implementing improved processes is a temporary measure unless organizations equip their employees working with processes to monitor and maintain improvements. In most organizations, process improvement includes a two-pronged approach. First, a process improvement team comprised of project management, methodology experts, and subject matter experts define, plan, and implement improvement. That team then equips the employees who work directly with the process daily to control and manage the process in its improved state. Controlling the process Often, Six Sigma improvements address processes that are out of control. Out of control processes meet specific statistical requirements. The goal of improvement is to bring a process back within a state of statistical control. Then, after improvements are implemented, measurements, statistics, and other Six Sigma tools are used to ensure the process remains in control. Part of any continuous improvement process is ensuring such controls are put in place and that the employees who are hands-on with the process on a regular basis know how to use the controls. So, we have discussed some of the common ideas or some of the common principles of Six Sigma.